Uh, I'm going to talk to you about a, a small clarion project which was focused on making maps from any phenomena you would like uh, for the Netherlands. And that could be linguistic phenomena, but for uh, some reasons I will explain, we did it for migration. And migration is, is just not uh, nice for demographers. <laughs> But uh, it's of interest also from, from the socio-economic point of view. <coughs> where, how does the uh, population, where does the population come from? Is it stable? Is it moving um, <coughs> over a long time, let's say a century? And that's of course uh, not only for socio-economic interest, but also in a, a cultural interest, <coughs> if you want to study cultural phenomena, but also of course of linguistic phenomena, phenomena I think of dialect development. And these issues. So migration is of interest, and actually the, the request for making this uh, this topic came from the social economics uh, side, uh, where they said, "Well, you have a very interesting uh, database and presentation of family names in the Netherlands, and uh, so you know how people moved. Actually, the families moved across the country. So can you make that? Vis can you visualize that in, uh, at, at a higher level? And this is the answer." So, do you move houses? When do you move houses, actually? And this is for the Netherlands. We also got from the data. Uh, usually you stay at home with your parents until the age of 18. And then, uh, well, if you move houses, you do that at that, uh, at that age. And in the Netherlands, you only move, let's say, 30 kilometers on average, which is not far. But it's, it has a long tail, let's say. So, so many people or students stay, uh, stay close. So they choose the university near to their parent's house. There are also, of course, people who don't move, actually don't move from the municipality of birth, but, well, they change a different neighborhood or a street, but they stay close, and that's the green line. So actually, we move houses, but not too far in the Netherlands, actually. Uh, where do we get the data from? Well, you could ask the Bureau of Statistics, and they will not give you. They just present you some data at a very high level, not a detail uh, you uh, are interested in. So we make a workaround, and now I get back to my work on monastics in the Netherlands. <coughs> I was nice to the government, well, the government was nice to me, actually, I should say, because they gave me all the data from all the Netherlands, all the Dutch people, uh, so that 60 million, so full population data on names. Uh, but they get more, and uh, I'll come to that later, but also the parents that also had disease or, or ancestors. So in all, we had uh, 22 million people uh, in our database, which is nice. And that's the coverage close to 100% uh, for the last 80 years. And of course, then, uh, this is all digitized. So, uh, well, in 1880, it was still 25% of the whole population, which is nice coverage, actually. So what did we get? Well, I get ideas. That, that, that's, that's terrific, actually. That, that's you. You will get, never get that from any government, but the Netherlands is quite relaxed in that, at least to me. <laughs> so I have a great responsibility. Yep. Okay, there's an idea. I got the gender, the municipality of birth, and the municipality of living in 2006 when we did the selection. And I got the ideas of the parents. But I said, I want to know about 40 monastic spot questions. I want to know the, the names of the grandparents because probably the grandchildren are named after that them and uh, well that process will have changed over the last century so I understood it. So I needed the ideas of the parents and through the ideas of the parents I also have the ideas of the grandparents and so on. So I have generations. Um, so that means that I have let us say, the whole populate the full genealogy of the population including the where they were born. And that's nice uh, to study migration. So the target groups are the linguists, of course, to study dialect, demographers, social economists, historians, and so on. And the requirement is easy data exploration. There should be data downloads. Everything I will show you is, is free. It's, it's at an aggregation level that is, can be accepted for uh, privacy, uh, privacy, uh, for privacy conditions. And uh, that's for the research community. And also, I want to, to, to uh, help them to interest the, 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 to, uh, the general public. So it should be very easy accessible and understandable what's going on. 
So the questions are, uh, well, the great-grandparents of the current residents of some town, where are they born? Where do they come from? And that's about a century span. Or otherwise around, if I started uh, the population, let's say, 100 years ago, where did the, do the grand, great-grandchildren live nowadays? So how it's, has, has it spread? These are the main, major questions to be uh, uh, answered in the, in the site. So the visualization is a map of the Netherlands, and that's, of course, the, the declaring part to make a flexible map, interactive. You can click on the map and these kinds of things. Uh, over 400 municipalities. Uh, you should, as a, as a user, choose a target municipality of an, or an area. There are various levels of geographic uh, representations. And you will get a request as percentage migration to or from <coughs> all the other municipalities to target municipalities. Uh, well, that will be clear in, in the example. And it could be also a foreign word. So, before starting the, the, the online uh, demonstration, this is what you will get. It's, uh, it's the map of the Netherlands. Uh, this is the targeted on Amsterdam. And it, it shows where the great-grandparents great of the current population in Amsterdam came from. So that's largely Amsterdam itself and other big cities like Rotterdam, that's the dark colors, and, and, but also from the northern part of the country, not from the south, not that much from the south. So you can click on... And the other question was where, uh, where if, we, if we started this, this place where are, and started the population 100 years ago, where are the uh, descendants of these people uh, still live, and they still live in that Saxonian area of Twente. And they, they, they like to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so these are the, the variables. Uh, municipalities, geographic area, so you, you can divide the Netherlands in 40 regions, or 24 dialect areas, or 12 provinces. You can choose gender, both, or male or female. Generations, how far back you want to you want to go, the, the current population or the parents or grandparents of the great grandparents. Uh, time direction, <coughs> as I explained already, uh, where they come from, that's one uh, question, or where the uh, descendants uh, move to, the dispersion. Okay, now I want to have the online demonstration. I can click. Uh, I just click at Amsterdam again. So you see, well, what, if I move around, you see uh, the place, so this is Utrecht, that's my place, uh, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, the big places. Um, so I can just click on this. Okay, so this is Amsterdam. Uh, so you, you, well, on the left you can see William really Public Country that, that one third of the population of Amsterdam is from abroad. Uh, many of them come from Amsterdam themselves, so that's 30% is born. Well, let's say the, the, the adult population, 30% is born in Amsterdam, 30% comes from abroad, and the rest comes from the rest of the country. But you can also look at the parents or the grand, grandparents. And the picture, well, does change if you look at the details, but the, the general picture uh, remains the same. It's interesting, you just can click another uh, town. And this is an interesting town because this is Almere, which is a in the uh, newly uh, regained uh, Polders uh, in the, in the Isomere. And of course, no one can be born there. So, so most people from Almere, or at least one third, comes from Amsterdam, actually. 32%. And this was uh, a remark uh, made by the Minister of the Interior, that, that most people of Almere came from Amsterdam, so just let's combine everything into one province, actually. Uh, so it, the launch the, the, of the website already <coughs> had the attention of the Minister of the Interior, of the interesting information that was there. Okay, so what you can do more is, for instance, let's say, uh, Urk. Now we give. So this is the. Then you uh, see that this is. Uh, this is, it was an island before it. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the ICB was. Po Oops, sorry. I don't like that one. Anyhow. But also the great brands, let's make just a jump. Now you see that, that, that the polders are not there anymore. 
uh, and uh, because we are 100 years ago, and the uh, Isle of Urk still has a very high percentage of the migrants. <coughs> so, so the people living in Urk, uh, have, well, over 50% have great grandparents that are <coughs> living in Urk. So if you want to study the dialect of Urk, you're in a nice place because likely many people uh, <coughs> take the, their language from their uh, ancestors. Okay, you can also go around, so, so we have lots of well, all these options, but you can also look at dispersion, for instance. So now I start with the, the uh, this should be about the same picture. This is the, uh, let's see, the, no, okay. So this is again for Dirk, that, that island here where the, the descendants, so the, the great-grandchildren of the people that lived in Berg are now uh, distributed, uh, dispersed across the Netherlands and many, 60% still lives in the Berg of the great-grandchildren of the years ago. So indeed, this is a very stable population in this isle of course. And so you can just scroll around the country and take any, any village you are interested in and and many users uh, actually did that. We had about, let's say, 10 to 20,000 users uh, over the last uh, half year, so which is nice. Uh, we also, yeah, we have one minute remaining, and then I go to the other. You have to help me again. Because the, there was also another nice visualization. Uh, when we launched this site, it had the attraction of the general public very much. It was a hype in the, in the, in the national news. Uh, a couple of months later, I was asked, uh, contacted by the television, and they said, "Well, when we want to do something nice uh, with your data, and we want to, well, can I just try to click this? I want, we want to visualize this in another way, attractive for a public, for a, for a program, the Netherlands from above. <coughs> so mm -hmm. that, that's a program uh, series which shows." Netherlands from above, and uh, this is the, what they made of this. <coughs> so they visualized uh, uh, the migration, and every uh, line is a migration. Uh, you can't see that they, it stays sometimes very close to the, the, this village of Stafford, which is a very religious village, and with only a very few migrations, but sometimes abroad, and it sparks about uh, out of the country. <laughs> And um, this is, for instance, Maastricht. <laughs> well, you might say people don't want to live in Maastricht, but that's not the case, actually. And this is uh, where well, people moving from uh, another village in the south. south and uh, this is where all people from Almere came from, actually. So they, they, they came from all over the country, they just all jumped into Almere. And some went out as well, they the experienced that. So this is a sneak preview, actually, it will be seen on the television, uh, well, one and a half million uh, viewers uh, in the next uh, half year, I guess, somewhere. Uh, that's it. Okay, thank you.